Alright, hello everyone, welcome back on board to some Python programming, looking at the XML RPC lib module. Uh, I'm at the documentation right now online, and we were looking at it in the last video, kind of researching, learning more about it, um, going through some, I don't know, just the documentation and reading and trying to understand what it is we can do and work with this, with this module. So, um, we were looking at the documentation online for Python, of course, and then eventually we kind of found this XML RPC how-to, with the um, Linux documentation project. And it had a lot of kind of cool information, and one of the things that it was showing us was um, the common XML RPC interfaces, um, and it was showing us these functions that we could call to explore more of the servers that we're looking at. So I want to kind of use this video as a vessel and a way to go about with the demonstration, to actually type this code and show you what it does and that sort of thing. So I'm going to fire up idle right now, I'm not going to actually go into a, a code editor or a text editor for any of this. I'm just going to do it within the Python shell. And you can see on this page that I'm at in the uh, XML RPC how-to, the Linux documentation project, we have some Python code presented to us when we're showing ourselves the introspection and discovering the server APIs and uh, learning more about the server that we're actually working with. So here's the Python code right here that we're looking at. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and type this and really execute it so you can watch it and understand what it's doing and that sort of thing. So anyway, let's get let's get started here. Import XML RPC lib. Um, by default, it is a built-in library, so I mean, at least my Python has it. I'm on Windows. I'm sure it would have it in Linux and I don't know. I, I don't know, it's just built in. <laughs> okay, get back to the code. The next line is actually setting a server object or a variable to kind of maintain the connection that we've got with this uh, server name here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this because I don't know I wanna, really want to type it. But this is live. This is working. This is just an example, uh, one that we can use in our code and actually experiment and play with. So what I'm going to do is actually set a variable name for this server name and equal this. And that's set for us. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, in the last tutorial, uh, in the last video, we were looking at the server kind of call and function class that what's what's created there, and it left us a note that server is actually kind of old. It's deprecated. It's 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 left for backwards compatibility, but now they're using server proxy. So we'll go ahead and use that in our code. I'll say server is going to equal XML RPC lib dot server proxy. Capital P and capital S, of course, for server. And we'll pass in, it says uh, URI, these other options that we can pass, but I'm not going to go into too much of that. We'll pass in our server name. And now we've got our server. We can see it's a server proxy object for this location. And this is the server, XML RPC server that we're looking at. So, for introspection and for discovering server APIs, the documentation in the, the Python-centered library was telling us that there is a reserved attribute server.system. The dot .system is the key word there that actually contains all of the um, methods that we can look at, all, or at least looking at list methods and method help and that sort of thing. So let's build this loop that they're showing us here, and we'll say for method in server.system list methods and we'll say print method we'll do print server dot system method help pass in the method now method is a string because we're looping through a list of strings here and method help takes a string you can see up here, out at the top of this kind of guide, it's telling us that, yeah, this is going to return a list or an array. Method help will return a string, and it takes a string. And then we'll just print out a new line. So now we hit enter. And hey, okay, now it goes through, connects to the server, and looks at everything we can do. There is a sample.add, and this will add two numbers. And these are things that are kind of unique to this server, the thing that we're connected to, the XML RPC location that we're calling. These other ones, 
like system list methods and system method help and system method signature, like we've seen are just kind of introspection and discovering server API stuff that's part of the server. These other ones, sample.add, sample sum and difference, are methods and functions that have been given to the server that are offered and we can call and use. So we use them by server and the dot selector to get to a, a new a new thing here. And this method, how it's written here, is how we're going to end up using it. So sample will exist. And if I use control space here, you see that nothing is going to show up in my idle like environment because it's not able to read what it has. It's, we're getting this information online from the server. So idle is not going to be able to parse through it and find the possible uh, code completion stuff for the functions and variables that are part of the package because we don't know what's part of the package yet. That's why we're able to look through it with list methods. So if I did server.sample.add, it adds two numbers. So I'm going to have to assume that it takes two arguments. So if I said one and two, this isn't going to return anything for us. Or at least it might. Yeah, okay, cool. So it just returns three. If I were to print this out, it'll do the same thing. And, hmm, not found. Is my server still on? Server system add one and two. Nope, okay. Let's hit back here. Connect one more time. Hmm. Oh, of course. I'm typing server system add. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. This kind of shows why it's important and crucial to use the actual name, even if it has a kind of a subclass to it. Sample. And debug here. System is reserved for, of course, list methods, method help, and method signature. But I've been typing server.system when I should have been typing server.sample. And now that works for us. Fantastic. So that's really kind of how it all pieces together. What we can do is we can look through server simple, uh, sorry, server dot system list methods to see what is available to us, and then we call them from the server. And let's see, there's another one: sum and difference. Let's do sum and difference. And say 3 and 8. Now it's returned to us the dictionary, a Python dict. The sum is 11 and the difference is negative 5. Of course we can say, oh yeah, this is just going to be our result. And we can use result indexed with sum to get the sum and difference to get negative 5. The difference. This works exactly like a Python dict and it's been returned to us through this XML RPC server that we connected to, and uh, that's all that we did. We created the server proxy object with the server name that we specify. We looked through the lists. We looked through a list of the methods and the things that it can do because of our introspection, discovering the server APIs and functions, and then we can call them just by knowing their name. This method help function can give us a description of what it does, and that's hopefully how we can learn more about it, like the arguments that it takes and that sort of thing. So that's the way that it goes. <laughs> XML RPC client, just connecting to it by calling a server proxy object, passing in the server name, and finding the functions you want to use and call, and then calling them. So super simple, super cool. Hope you enjoyed this. Sorry about my little mess up with the uh, uh, system and sample. <laughs> that's my own fault. But just to reiterate, know the names of the functions you're calling. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. If you are liking these videos, maybe like maybe like the video, maybe leave a comment, maybe subscribe. I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> All right. See you in the next tutorial, guys. Bye.